Let's have the confession before the word as we go into God's word. We're going to have a great time in the word of God. We came for the word. Amen. We, how many of you came for the word? I came for the word. All right, let's pray the confession together. One, two, three, go with full attention. And the enablement to do that. Amen. 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 Let's be seated. As you are sitting down, say, I prosper. I prosper. More than money, I prosper. More than the riches of this world, I prosper. Beyond my personal needs, I prosper. So I, I, if I could kneel to beg all of you, I would, have, I would have done it. But I'm saying take this series extremely what? Seriously. Extremely seriously. God, see, I, I was thinking of that scripture. It says, by you shall the nations of the world be blessed. I'm a dispenser of prosperity. As I meditated on that thing and got the Holy Ghost impressed an example of such in my heart. You know, when Joseph succeeded and prospered, oh, okay. Joseph, Joseph was not his wealth. His personal riches was not the emphasis. I hope you know that. That was not the emphasis. But by Joseph, the nation of Israel, the whole nation of Israel had food to eat. Did you see that now? The whole nation of Israel. By Joseph. Say, I prosper. I, prosper. I, open, doors I open doors to many. Say, I open doors to many. Call your family name. Say, by me, by me. shall the David and Dakarazas be blessed. So in this church, we are not afraid of family calling us. Amen. Amen. The prayer is, God, bless me so I can bless them. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying? You are, I say you'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. You'll be so blessed, you can call your uncle. Instead of his children to be calling you one by one, just call your uncle. Say, Daddy, sir, what would you like to do? Let's start a business for you. So that that gate, you people are sorted. Do you understand it? That gate, you people are sorted. Antique place, come. What can you sell? What can you sell? Think of something you can sell. Take this 10 million, go and start selling. So your children's school fees. Do you understand what I'm saying? Say it's me. Say I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed like that. You know what 1 Timothy 6, 17 says? Charge them that are rich in this world. Now, Greg, that was a letter written to a pastor. Timothy is the pastor. Paul was, the apostle was instructing the pastor what to tell the rich people in the church. So, the mere fact that it is possible for there to be rich people in the church. Let's just accept. Is it possible? Is it possible? Then it's also possible that it is me that is the rich people in the church. Amen. Amen. Charge them that are rich. Where? In this world. In this world. In this world. And I will be that. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's get in. Today we'll start. We'll enter through a different door. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6 and verse 33. But, it starts with a contract. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33 is about setting proper priorities. He said, seek first the king. Seek first the king. So when you look at that word, the bot, is obviously a contrast with the pursuit of the Gentiles. Jesus is saying, Rather than being like the Gentiles or the pagans. Uh, Where is innocent? Yes, come and turn this speaker a bit. It's, reverberation is too much for me. Look at it this way. You know, he said, all these things do the Gentiles seek. 
And somehow, a lot of our prayers is what Jesus would have called Gentile seeking. So you want to audit your prayers. What are you praying about? Is your prayer Gentile seeking? Or you are genuinely in truth praying as Jesus would have you pray. Praise the Lord. So he said, instead of you to be Gentile seeking, and what is Gentile seeking? Very simple. You are a Gentile when you are consumed about your physical needs. You are a Gentile when your prayer points is all about your physical needs. That's what Gentile seeking is. When all your prayers is about what you will eat, where you will stay, your school fees. It says you are a Gentile. He said, the citizens of the kingdom of heaven should be consigned about one thing, the things of the kingdom. The things of the kingdom. We have a series on our Telegram channel titled, Ask for Deeper Things. The things, or so he says, seek first the kingdom. He said that the kingdom of God should not be your interest. The kingdom of God should not be your priority. Kingdom citizens, they wake up in the morning and their meditation is, how am I going to please God today? How am I going to advance the kingdom today? How am I going to bring glory to God today? How am I going to bring honor to the name of the Most High today? It says, but seek you first. In fact, just by simple English, when you hear but, you know that that conversation did not start there. Something was said before, and this is only contrasting it. So where did the conversation start from? Let's go to verse 27 of the same Matthew and verse 6. It says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit, cubit unto his stature, sorry? And why take he thought for raiment, which is clothes? Consider the lilies of the field. Consider how they grow. They neither toil, nor do they spin. He says toiling is not what brings growth. Toiling is not what brings growth. You want to check what you are putting your energy in. Toiling is not what brings growth. Now, Listen to me, the number one pain point in the whole world is money. And on a surveil of prayer points, the number one prayer point in the whole world is also money. Because it is their pain they pray. Do you understand it? Money. That's what people are praying about. Money. Money. Look at verse 29. It says, yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory, with all the money that, and wisdom that Solomon had, was not arrayed like one of these lilies of the field. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which, is today, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, he says, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Please. I want you to catch all these things and don't hurry through them. But then he says here that, remember I talked about clothes, raiment, your physical needs. These verses of scripture we just read communicate one thing and one thing only. Listen. He said your physical need is a matter of faith. It is a matter of what? Faith. See, it's a matter of faith far before it's a matter of work. Because it contrasted work, oh, he said, they neither toil nor what? Spin. As sometimes when you hear this kind of things, I need your heart to rise. So, take it literal. Clothes that I will put on is a matter of what? Faith. He says, oh ye of, he was talking about clothes that I will wear. He said, oh ye of little what? Faith. So, just be a bit more pragmatic. So, my clothing 
where I will stay, what I will eat, is a matter of my faith. If I'm not getting enough to eat, if I'm not getting enough to wear, if I'm not paying the rent on time, what should I check? My faith. Do you all understand what I'm saying? It says, O ye of little faith. So needs are a matter of faith. My need will be met to the degree I am in faith. It says, O ye of little faith. My growth, because it says, look at the lilies, they are growing. It's not a matter of too much exercise physically. It's a matter of what? Faith. Now verse 31. It says, therefore, as a matter of instruction, take note of that is do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Wherewith shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. Are you guys seeing it now? The Gentiles are about physical needs. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Where shall we stay? Where shall we wear? He says, this should not overtake your praying. This should not overtake your praying. He says, what should you do? Contrast. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought again for tomorrow. Huh? Tomorrow has his own shaggy. That's what he says. Oh. Praise God. By implication, he says, don't worry about lower things. So what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear. Jesus called them what? Lower things. He said, don't let that be the thing that consume you. Don't let that be the thing that keep you awake. No. He said, rather, there's something that you should be consumed with. Stop planning and scheming to the point of anxiety because of food. Because of making more money. He says, the only answer is what? Seek. Now, everybody is driven by something. Everybody is under the compulsion of a driving force. In fact, if you see a person without passion, it's not a real person. I hope you know that. It's not a real man. What is Jesus now saying? Jesus says that let food not be your motivator. Let money not be the reason you wake up and you go to work. No. He said one thing should make your heart beat. One thing should make your heart beat. And what is that thing? The kingdom of God. Let the kingdom of God be your obsession. Jeremiah 45 and verse 5. It says, seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. Let those things not be your pursuit. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. Listen, God keeps his promise. And God always goes beyond. God never gives enough. God always gives more than I'll give you a simple example. In 1 Kings 5, 12, God had promised Solomon wisdom. What did God give to him? God gave him wisdom. God gave him riches. God gave him the breadth of mind as wide as the sea shore. But what was God to give to him? What? Wisdom. God always gives more than enough. Did you hear what I said? Listen. It says, now to him who is able to do. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Exceedingly. Abundantly. Are you getting the idea? That's Ephesians 3.20. More than we can ask or think. What does that mean? God can meet your need more than you can pray. Did you hear what I said? And when God wants to meet your need, God doesn't do small. Once Abraham sin was barren, Abraham I had had Isaac and the sons of the concubine. Are you seeing that there now? God doesn't do enough. No, God doesn't do enough. God does not want to give you one. Oh, are you here? Are you here? Are you here? 
You've not had a child for a while now, and then you just say, God, just give me one. Just give me one. Make my shame. Make my shame. Just wipe my shame. Give me one. No, God will not give you one. God does not do that. God doesn't do small. He does nothing small. He gives nothing miserly. Oh, are you all here? Jerry, uh, what was James 1, 5? If any lack wisdom, let him come and what? Ask. God, who give it how? Who give it how? Who give it how? The Greek is God who gives promiscuously. God just gives and what? Gives. Keeping no record of the fact that he has given you before. You know, you know, when you ask a man for money, he gives you. You ask him tomorrow, he gives you. You ask him, he will remind you. Do you understand? What give liberally means is that when God gives you, he does not keep record. You can ask him again, and he will still give you. Oh, are you all here? Anybody under the sound of my voice who think that you have wasted your, your last opportunity? That day that you pray to God to give you that last chance, your last chance. You know your last chance. Some of us have prayed that prayer. Don't give me this one. I'm not going to waste on God. Just give me my last chance. Listen to me. God does not have last chance for you. God knows you. God knows what he will do with your next money. The you, you know I just told you. God knows what he will do with your next money. As you're coming to this church, they're preaching this thing. You, you, just, you made up your mind that once that money just enter, you just buy AC for this church. You buy 10 AC for the church. God, they look you. Yemu. God knows once the money enter now, like you don't buy a class. And God will still give you another money. This is not to encourage wastage. This is to tell you who your father is. He gives how? Liberally. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So please, if you are here, you think you have used your last chance. You have not used your last chance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not the God of second chances. It's the God of chances. He will keep giving you until you get it. God is not slack. Second Peter 3, 9. Consigning his promises. But God is long-suffering to us, what? Not willing that any should, what? Perish. But that all should come to repentance. You know what it means? One of the implications of 2 Peter 3, 9 is that God will keep giving you chances till you get it. Oh, are you all hearing what I'm telling you? So please, if you are here, something inside you have been telling you that, uh, see, I no bother, no bother. You don't miss your husband. Just find man born for. Are you getting the idea? That thing is the devil. That thing that is telling you that, that whatever is stupid, it is the what? The devil. We serve a God who gives what? Liberally. Can you preach it to your neighbor? Say, God gives liberally. God gives liberally. As I said, there's an illustration in my mind. The illustration is how that, when, you, when they say somebody gives liberally, eh? so these two people are having a conversation. May we go meet them. And this one said, I don't meet her many times this year. Only this year. You don't give me money six times. I, have you ever seen somebody that helped you like that before? Only you, culture culture go to judge you. Culture go to judge you. I'm not fair sign there. You don't, you don't try. He himself don't. He himself don't try. Have you been there before? So you're not telling your friend, say, he don't try. He don't try. Your friend say, leave her. Now, so he they do. He they give. He go see. Do you guys understand it now? So what I'm telling you is, he will still give you. Go. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Ask him again. He will still what? Give you. There's a song in my heart as I say this thing. That's just the way the father is. He be your friend when you're not his. That's just the way the... You know, it's, see, the Bible says it is in his character to be faithful. Uh, do you guys understand it? No, no. It is who... He is. Oh. God is an expert at forgetting. Helen Bella was right when she sang, into the sea of forgetfulness. That's where God keeps the record. That's why it says, if God were to count sin, who? Who shall stand? God does not count sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is also deliverance for you here this morning. The devil is counting sin for you. You remember when you, you remember, see, listen, any count of sin does not come from God. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, if God were to count sin, who shall what? Stand. 
So anything that is reminding you, you know, say 1994, now I saw you thief. 2004, now I saw you, 2024, every time you're actually the thief. <laughs> Listen, any count of such sin is not coming from God. It's coming from the, and that's his weapon of accusation. Reminder of wrong. Oh, are you all hearing what I'm saying? He says, at the point of asking, the Bible says, he unbraided not. You know what, uh, what it means? Say, so when you are requesting him to save you, God does not put criteria. Criteria has been met in the blood of Jesus. Whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall is the most sure word in the New Testament. Shall means without fail, that person shall be what? Say. So somebody here, God is saying to tell you, call again. Ask me again. I will give you another chance. Sometimes, eh? Are you people here in church? Sometimes you were not mature enough for the opportunity that opened up. You hear what I'm saying? Sometimes you were not mature enough. They gave you the opportunity. You went into the office, you talked anyhow. That's why that one. Do you understand? You are bigger now. God will give you the chance again for the purification of your... Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, sometimes God... Certain relationship goes sour. And you are thanking God for what God saved you from. Sometimes God is saving people from you. Hey, amen. 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 Sometimes God is saving people from what? Every one of us, including yours truly. We grow on people. People grow on us. You go use some people experiment. Some people go use you experiment. Praise God. I was in a relationship. Show life story. Huh? Relationship before this relationship. <laughs> and then the lady did some one guy just said, but begged, begged by saying, No, 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 I'm 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 done. She now started cutting someone else, who she's married to with children and all of that. One day, long before I was married, she got married like two years before me. We spoke on the phone. And I said, I hope you are better now. She said, with the things I learned from you, I have sense. <laughs> she said, I have sense. Let me tell you what it means. She used our, co- de- our relationship. Do you understand what I'm saying? She is a master class. You get it now. She says, she says no, no, no. I have what? Sense. So please, it's not every time God saves you from something. A lot of time, God saves people from you. And it's okay. Do you understand? We they grow. Are you getting the idea? So don't be doing a thank God for what God said before. You were about to kill somebody. Some of you men, you know your anger problem. Poor men are angry men. No, I say to you, poor men are what? Some of you even need to thank the women that were in your life that time. You try. Have you not seen the changes in you now? Be truthful. Have you not seen the changes in you? When men don't have money, the women with them, they are the, the person that take every problem. They even lie to them. Now they get an eye with them. Now they, now they wish. When you say, get out my way, you go there with your hand, go they hot. <laughs> get out my way, you go there with your hand, go cold. Go co. They will call the cash. Now such men will come to call the cash wish. Listen, you were immature. Everyone shall thank you, Father. <laughs> Say one more time. Say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So he says, seek you first the kingdom of God. And when God wants to give you, he says, all other things shall be what? Added unto you. But let's take it step by step. The first word is what? Seek. What is seek? Investigate to learn. Investigate to learn. Let me just jump the gun. You know, every time we hear the phrase, seek you first the kingdom of God, as ministry men, we just say, you know what? Our lives should be about the furtherance of the kingdom. The furtherance of the gospel. The furtherance of the glory of God. You cannot further what you know nothing about. The first implication of seeking first the kingdom is learning the kingdom. Investigate to what? Learn. Learn how the kingdom operates. And by implication, seek here means be single-eyed. Let it be your life pursuit. That's why Paul said, this one thing I do, one thing. Let your life be about what? One thing. 
One thing. So, it's about a single-minded focus. Let your life be about one thing. Matthew 6, 22, 23. It says, if the body, if the eye be single, rather, the body shall be full of lights. I keep saying it. I'll say it again. Where you are going is not far. It's a distraction that is many. Some of you need to drop a lot of things you are doing and focus on one thing. Focus on what? One thing. Be a master of one thing. It says, if the eye be single, the body shall be full of light. So Jesus is saying, listen to me. Let the kingdom be your one thing. This one thing I do. I wake up in the morning is about this one thing. I brush my teeth is about this one thing. I sleep is about this one thing. I eat is about, I read, I buy books. It's about this one thing. I was, I was telling you guys on Friday, I was buying some books. So the way the, the thing is, they sent me the picture. So I was buying books from discipleship, church. The guys, because the guy is buying book now, he was now putting one six digger there. I said, oh guy, don't show me any book like this again. Are you seeing the book I'm buying? Multiply your money. Oh God, don't try. I don't want to multiply money. Back to where we were. Discipleship. Are you getting the idea? So, all the book I'm buying, one book. Do you understand what I'm saying? This one thing I do. One of the things I should know is this. Some knowledge is useless knowledge. As you are here now, if you know all the states and capital for USA, You know all the state of capital in the U.S. Right? But you don't know how much they sell raw material to, for the things you produce. What do you have? Useless knowledge. Even in the kingdom, there's useless knowledge. That's, see, you don't see me involved in some crazy argument. Too. You know, between Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, is some thousands of years. Huh? You know, that's when, you know, when God, what God, God created can, cannot be imperfect. So in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, so perfect. Verse 2, and the earth was that from, that's when Satan fell. Huh. Huh. <laughs> so you know all this. You know all this. And you don't know how to move your stuff from year to year. So you know all this. Useless what? Knowledge. He say, listen, you know, listen to me. Who did he came married now? I'm very sure came married the other child of Adam and Eve. Later they born gay. Huh? You know this. You really know this. Eh? Uh-huh. I'm not saying people should not know it all. But my grandmother used to speak one bad English. What he consider me? If she wants to say what he consider me, she will say, What he consider me. So not he consider me. Consider who came marry. Amen. I don't say came, came marry, but his wife, if his wife had less sin to teach us, the things that were written, Romans 15, 4, our fourth time were written for our learning. If God knows say I go learn something for Cain wife, he for tell me. But as God not tell me, I know are you getting what I'm saying? Some battles online, they say the great tribulation and rapture, which will happen first. What will it change? Some people, they don't like, want to keep sinning. So you will know when rapture. You just jump and say, yeah, I made it. <laughs> like, great tribulation, rapture, great tribulation, rapture. They will not argue and argue. Useless words. Knowledge. What you need to know now is in front of you. Whatever you are struggling with is what you need to know now. If you want to ask, some people ask me, what, Pastor, so your book, I should ask you, so your book, you should read. You don't know your need. Your need right now is the book you need to buy. As a pastor of this church, I tell you I'm buying discipleship book. You they ask me your own book. Do you hear what I'm saying? You see, the book you need to buy is a problem in your life. So what problem do you have now? The problem in your office. 2024, never reach how many months. You don't sack four staff. They come, they go, come, they go. There's a problem with people management. There's a problem with recruitment. 
So you go and buy books on how to recruit right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't go and see book. People are reading something somewhere. The trendy books. Atomic Habits. And what you need is bookkeeping. Because the thing where they said yesterday for store, the money, you don't know where it is. Instead of you to write, buy bookkeeping for dummies. <laughs> That's a lesson for some people. Praise God. So seek means one. Investigate or learn two. Be single-eyed about your pursuit. Be single-eyed about your pursuit. Let it be your one thing. Therefore, Jesus now said something. Listen up. It says the only antidote to worrying is making a daily and deliberate habitual practice of prioritizing God and his kingdom. See, there is no other antidote to worrying. Oh, let me tell you something. Miracles does not stop people from worrying. No, 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 it doesn't. We see a lot of things today, God, by God's grace. The only antidote to anxiety is that when you wake up tomorrow, make God number one. Make him your pursuit. You hear what I'm telling you? Make him the reason that you live. Make him be one thing that your life is about. If you are not prioritizing the kingdom daily, you shall be overtaken by anxiety without a doubt. Why? The world always has new pleasures. The world always has new things for you to get. So if you do not demonstrate that your thoughts and your action is about the kingdom of God, listen, the world will take you down. The world will take you down. There's no, look, there is no way. There is no way. There is absolutely no way. Let me show you something. You know, the world will always bring to you new things to have. There's always something to have. And there's always something to have that will complete you a man. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you don't have this thing, you are not yet a man. And then, the standard of masculinity in this world is a shifting goalpost. And then if you follow that standard, you give yourself hypertension. And that's where worry is. But seek you first, the kingdom of the Lord. You can only do this when you seek him with all your heart. Deuteronomy 4.29, it says, When you will seek the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul, you shall find him. You shall find him. First Chronicles 28 and verse 9, it says, For you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. Serve him with your whole heart. And a willing mind. For the Lord searched all hearts and understands every intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So look at how it is. So if you are pursuing basic necessities of this life, the world will keep updating what is a necessity. And as the world is updating the necessities of the world, your anxiety will be going up and now, this area, that people, they stay now. Eh? If you have lived the worry long enough, one time, everybody, they build house for Sudi. How many of you know that time? One time, everybody moved to Plantation City. Army Estate. You go, they move, oh. Are you getting what I'm saying? You go, they move. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you see they drive Toyota. They're a small boy. They're a small boy. You have no base. Uncle Ben's rice. You have no base. <laughs> so, so seeking demand that you have to use a level of intensity, a perseverance, a zeal. But what I want to present to you is the word first. It says seek first. Let it be your foremost desire. Let it be your most prominent desire. Let it be your most important pursuit. First as in time. Give it more of your time. First as in place. First as in order. First as in 
importance. He said, let the kingdom of God be your dominant concern. Seek first. What you do with your time shows what is your important thing. Shows what is first in your life. What you do with your time and your money is what shows what is first in your life. So what do you seek first? Let's do a classwork. Write it in your own study note. Put your name. So, Bore, what do you seek first? I'll give you some options. People. Option B. Possessions. Option C. Power. Option D. Prestige. Option E. Pleasure. What do you seek the most? Some people, they are Obiageli, or they came to this life to, to chop. Right? Eh? Obiageli, we come here to what? Chop. Me, I not come this life, come suffer. And when you see them, they are here for what? Pleasure. Hmm? Anywhere where there is enjoyment. Call me. Call me. And you pick all these things from social media, you don't know what it implies. What is your pursuit? Some of us, our quest for control, that's power. That's our pursuit. You wake up every day thinking of how to scheme and get people under you. That's your pursuit there. Is, your pursuit there is power. What's your pursuit? Prestige. How they see you. You paint outside of the house, leave the inside. Prestige. How they see you. The car you drive is more important than the school your children go to. How they see you. You will buy that perfume so that when you stay among men, they will know that you don't show. Before you come down like this, your, your board, that they, you know, they oud out. Last semester, your sister couldn't pay school fees. What's your pursuit? It's showing in where you are spending your money and your what? Your time. So seek you first. You see, these five things I listed, people, possession, prestige, power, and um, pleasure. Check what you are looking for. Check what is important to you. Check. Check. Just check. And a good way for you to just do this, go to Romans 12, verse 1. It says that this issue, um, um, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Don't do it by your strength. He said, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You have to wake up every day worship, you know. Worship is when you, I was telling some guys in class yesterday, I said, what happened in Gethsemane is not prayer, as some people call prayer. What happened in Gethsemane is worship. A relinquishing of the will. He said, not my will, but thine. You have to wake up every morning saying, yes, Lord. Otherwise, the natural man is always ascending in his heart. He wants to climb. He wants to take. He wants to get. Some of you, you enter an office. You look at everybody. You see the ogre. Say, one day I will be the ogre. Is that not what happens in your heart? One day I mean, this guy go to vote. That guy. You just, the natural man is ascending. And without worship, how we become the ogre, eh? He will clamp people. Are you getting the idea? He will kill, he will destroy just to get there. And that's why worship is of extreme what? Importance. Because, hey, in each of us, you see, no wonder God has to give commandments. Thou shalt not take thy neighbors. Because natural man, natural man, he stay, how say, he wake up one, he say, I won't stay here too. You see, far back as when we were in university, back in Dinkaro, Abraka at that time, you go to find better hostel. I don't know if they see it. You they look for better hostel, you will see one good self-contained. That's what they call it, but it's a red sitter that you like. Where you are negotiating with landlord, somebody will come and offer the landlord more money. Student, oh, student, oh. Imagine these are people that are politicians today. These are normal student, oh. You did we are the landlord, the one I agreed 50,000, but there's somebody who says, I want to pay 65. I want to stay here. 
house where you they stay, your neighbor go give your landlord money, may, you, may they give you fixed notice. The natural, are you hear what I'm saying? In this worry, parents, parents went to tell owner of school that vagabonds and useless boys cannot afford this school. Please, we beg you, man, increase the school fees. We will pay. The na see, natural man, oh. Nat see, that is who a natural man is. The only way is that you wake up and then you say, Lord, I'm yours. And you, have you seen your, have you not seen, you, have you seen yourself in this play before? How many of you can be honest that you have seen yourself in this play and then you say, God, this one's still there inside. You see, it's still, it's still there. You will be angry before you want to use your power to vanish somebody from the earth. You pick your phone. The call you want to make now is how they will just see, they should arrest these guys on unknown location. Let his family not even know. You are born again or you are tongue speaking. You never verse that kind of verse before. After the verse, you call shame. You don't verse me when you verse, you call shame. When you come on there. What God just showed you is that some debris is still there. They give you power, you go keep. How many of you know that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, Father, help me. So Jesus was saying, make the kingdom of God your priority. He knows that you want husband. He knows that you want children. He knows that you want healing. He knows you want a breakthrough business idea. He said, but make the kingdom of God your what? Your priority. So a time management expert went to Harvard and did one research. So he brought a big bowl. Now look at this illustration now. He brought a big bowl. And then he brought big, let's say, fist-sized rocks. Rocks that are like this big. Then he began to put them in the bowl. When he put them in the bowl and the, they got to the top of the bowl, he asked the people in the class, is the bowl full? And they said, yes. Then he brought granite and poured inside the bowl. You know the way all those huge fish-sized rock is? They will leave spaces. So when he poured the granite, they had places to fall into. Are you seeing that? And then he asked them, is the bowl full? Based on experience, they said, no. So he brought sand, sharp sand. You know between this size of rock and granite, there will still be what? So he poured sand. Still it was full. Then he asked them, is the bowl full? They didn't want to fail. They said no. So he went to bring water and turned the water inside. Somehow the bowl still took. He answered, is the bowl full? They wanted to say no. He said it's full. She lies. <laughs> the bowl is full. Relax. So, so what's the moral of the thing? One guy gave a crazy answer. But this is what he told them. He said, if I did not put the big rock first, I would not have had space to take this much. Do you understand? Matthew 6, 33, he said, first things first. He said, if you seek the big rock, which is Jesus and his kingdom, you have space for granite, you have space for sand, you have space for water. He said, and all other things shall be are dead unto you. He said, but this is the trick. If they first put sand inside that bowl, there will be no space for the big rocks. Are you seeing it? If they put water inside that bowl first, obviously. Are you getting the idea? He said, so you are seeking the wrong thing. And because of what you are seeking, you can never even get that one that you are seeking. Oh, are you getting this? There's one scene of Oliver Twist that is very gory in my mind. I don't know if you, how many of you really watched the Oliver Twist as a movie. Where besides, after he stole some of the treasure, he was in a quicksand. And one gold fell inside the quicksand. Then he dropped the rest of the gold on his hand, on the quicksand, to save, 
So after he has tried and he couldn't save it, he now came back for <laughs> and he was gone. That's what it is like when you seek what to eat, what to wear, what to drink, where to stay. The needs just keep eluding you. And the reason is you did not put the big rock first. And what's the big rock? Seek you first the kingdom. Seek you first the kingdom. So very simple. All those things you are anxious about, they are pushing your, best, your blessing farther and what? Farther. I say, so let your life be spent on one thing and other things will come in after. So hear and hear me now. You must mind the one that is your business and, mind, and leave the one that is an addition to the Lord. Leave the one that is an addition to the Lord. Seek you first, the kingdom of God. Righteousness here means the way of being right and the way of doing right in the eyes of God. Please, that definition is simple but powerful. You are not the yastic of right. You are not the yastic of right. Righteousness is the way of being and doing right in the eyes of God. We belong to a kingdom, a real kingdom. We belong to a real what? Kingdom. And what that also means is that the kingdom have domain and dominion over us. And every kingdom has its own rules. If you live in Nigeria, Nigeria today and you go to the UK, in fact, there's even kingdom in their name, United Kingdom. And you see them put their stereo on the right. You know, when Nigerians locate, that's one of the biggest shock. Can you drive? Say yes, yeah, so come and drive. If they do you one kind, if they, if they, we're supposed to be going. So the kingdom has its own rules. How many of you are saved? saved? If you are saved, you will not need to learn. To be saved means you are now in the kingdom of God. I say it this way. Once you get saved, you are now in the ever-growing sons republic of God. Right? It's a kingdom. It's a country of its own. And that country have rules and regulation. So one of the things Jesus implied when he says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What does that mean? It says, pursue God and pursue how God does his things. Seek you, don't just seek you first the kingdom. Seek also his righteousness. The way of being and doing Right in the eyes of God. Seek the way he does his things. Listen. Jesus said, although we are in this world, John 17, I believe 14, it says, we are not of this world. So we are not supposed to behave like this world. We are not supposed to trade like this world. We're not supposed to marry like this world. That's the way we are supposed to be. You know, Jesus said, I'm sending you forth as what? Sheep among wolves. That statement is so technical. Do you know that wolves eat sheep? Wolves eat what? Sheep. And Jesus said, I'm sending you as what? Sheep among There's a wisdom to live in this world. That's what it means. Otherwise, the world will eat you. There's a wisdom we're supposed to operate with in this world. So seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness is learning how the kingdom of God operates. We don't bow down to the rules of this world. What did Romans tell us again in Romans 12 too? Be ye not conformed to this world. What there in Romans 12 too is cosmos. The systems of this world. He said, don't bow. Don't take the more than the shape of the systems of this world. So we are supposed to trade differently. John 18, 36. Jesus stood in front of a political ruler. And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Your kingdom is not of this world. The rules that apply for you are... Are different. That's why when a stealing opportunity comes in the office, 
You don't join them to steal. No. Why? You operate by a different rule. Your kingdom is not of this world. How many of you are still here? Second Corinthians 6, 17. He said, come out from among them and be ye separate. So when he says, seek ye first the kingdom, learn the kingdom, learn the principles of the kingdom, learn the patterns of the kingdom, also learn the processes of the kingdom. So if, how many of you agree that we're in a different kingdom? Do you agree that we're in a different kingdom? You have seen Jesus in John 18, 36, right? Now, if we are in a different kingdom, then you must know this. Our kingdom has its own economic system. Oh, did you see that? Our kingdom also has its own blessing system. Its own banking system. One of the crazy things about our banking system is that it says in 1 Timothy 6, 17, 18, it says when you are willing to communicate, when you are ready to distribute, it says you are laying up treasure. Are you seeing that now? You are banking money. Is it not interesting? Then he said, he that giveth to the poor, lend it to God. Have you heard those scriptures before? Our economic system is just different. So in our kingdom, our rules are different. Tell your neighbor for me, in case pastor is too far from them. Tell them, in the kingdom of God we now belong to. Our rules are different. Say it again. Say, our rules are different. Let me show you one place where our rules are different. Look at what Jesus emphasized. In Mark 10, from verse 29, three verses there. Mark 10, 29. He said, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left houses, brothers, sisters, mother or father, and children or farms for my sake or for the sake of the gospel, that he shall receive a hundred times as much now in the present age Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and farms, along with persecution. And in the age to come, he will get that eternal life. But many who are first will be last. And many who are last will be what? First. The rules of the kingdom, they are what? Different. Paul in Romans 8.31 said, What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Our rules are what? Different. So Paul says, first, I mean, look, Jesus here in Matthew 6, 33, he says, first things first. So a few things, please. Raise your hand. You have to be conscious. And I told you last week, consciousness is not about knowing about knowing something. Consciousness is the fact that you are working in it every day. Conducting your life by it. And you are working productive effort from that place. Because every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus, they grow by the way we acknowledge them. Philemon 1 and verse 6. It says that the communication of your faith may be effectual according to how you acknowledge every good thing that is in you. In Christ Jesus. So consciousness is a deliberate awakening to. Say, I'm not of this world. Say it out. Say, I'm not of this world. I can't hear you. Say it out loud. I'm not of this world. See, there are rules, oh, praise, praise God. I said, there are what? There are rules. There are rules. Don't fight like people of this world fight. Somebody, for example, declares himself your enemy and your competitor. Then he's doing crazy things on the outside. You too want to do that. Is that how you fight? After all, we'll come to church and be singing, this is how I find my battles. And you have gone to court. You have already gone to court. You are singing, this is how we fight. Which battle are you fighting? Paul said, can't you suffer to be defrauded? Tell somebody, there are rules. We operate by different rules. So you have to walk in the consciousness that you are different and you operate from a different 
kingdom. I said, seek you first means seek to learn. That's the first definition. How do you learn of this kingdom? The Bible is a manual of the kingdom of God. You must discover and deploy your Bible. You must discover and deploy your Bible. One thing to learn today is this. Worry is an absolute waste of time. Anxiety is a fruitless effort. Matthew 6, 27 says, which of you by taking thought can add? So worrying cannot add anything. It's a complete waste of time. So man, no, don't wake up and sit down on the edge of your bed like this. Some of you, you get up in the morning. It's time to pray. The company that I've called, you say, okay, I'm ready. I want to pray. I want to pray. You get up, then you now sit on the edge of the bed. Then you now remember something. Before you know it, you have done two hours. Two hours of soul travel, checking the eggs for the answers. And when you finish, what do you bring back? Absolutely what? Nothing. Which of you, by taking thoughts, can add? So simply put, worry produces nothing. So today what we want to do is study the major principle of the kingdom. It says, seek you first the kingdom, right? I said, seek to learn the ways of the... Let me tell you the truth. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can be in a place for a long time. As long as you don't know the rules of that place, you will never enjoy the benefits of that place. Did you hear what I said? Oh, yes. Scripture tells us that the hair, as long as he is a child, untrained. He is not different from the servant. I was working in Lagos. Three years I was in an office. I didn't know I was entitled to HMO. I didn't know that I was entitled to a paid leave. I didn't know I was also entitled to a paid training that I can take a training and say this is the training I want to do and the office will pay. I didn't even know I was entitled to Mick and Milo weekly. That's the one that paid me the most. I used to see all these ladies from procurement. They have this trolley. They used to roll. Do you understand? I just feel like not many people like me. I suppose they give us all this sachet of milk. And every week, oh, if I, and one day I just knew. I went to HR. I said, "You owe me three years leave." No, 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 no. Three years, three years. But you see, they didn't give me three years leave. Oh. They gave me leave for this year. I was today years old when I knew I was entitled. Are you getting the idea? So, was I entitled to the leave before? Did I enjoy it? You will not get the benefit of the kingdom as long as you are ignorant about the kingdom. Seek you first. Learn the kingdom. Learn the kingdom. Otherwise, you will not benefit from this kingdom. He said, the head of the throne. What does that mean? That's a big title now. Crown prince. But the crown prince is a child. He does not even know what is his. If he don't know what is his, how will he enjoy what is his? Are you getting the idea? So believers, we must learn the kingdom. In Mark 4, which is what we'll do out today, Jesus gave us the central principle of the kingdom. It's called the seed principle. The seed principle. Mark 4, 13, Jesus said, know ye not this parable? He says, how then will you now know all parables? He said, this one is the central principle of the kingdom. If you are a Christian by name and you don't understand this principle, he said, you won't benefit anything in the kingdom. So, I want to just call all your indulgence and attention. Pay attention now. Tell your neighbor, pay attention now. Tell somebody else, say, you want to benefit from this faith? You have to pay attention now. So he says, seek you first the kingdom. You know why I love Mark 4? Jesus gave different parables there. And all of them, he began the same way. He said, the kingdom of God is like... So let's join everything together. Matthew 6, just now, said we should seek first the what? Kingdom. 
We should learn of the kingdom. In Mark 4, Jesus began to describe the operations of the kingdom. Are you seeing it? So let's see. Let's see. Verse 26 of Mark 4. And he said, so is the kingdom. That is, this is how the kingdom operates. It's as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Everyone, please raise your hand. I want to show you something very powerful. The kingdom of God begins with a man. Look at your Bible. So is the kingdom. It's as if who? It's as if who? I, I can't hear. It's as if who? A man. Oh, let me tell you what I'm trying to say to you. You would like to see the hand of God in your life, Abi? The Bible says it begins with who? You. Not with God. He said, this is how the kingdom of God operates. Is a man. He said, where you want to see the oppressions of God's power. Do you know, for example, I teach me this system. Do you know the presence of God is here? Who brought it here? We did. Say, I did. It's an empty building. It's an empty hall. The things don't do by the reception. I've been now. It's just an empty hall. We made it a church. But we brought the grace. Are you getting the idea? So church begins when men gather. Men, 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 men. Are you getting the idea? Men. E two or three men shall gather in my name. There, I'm what? Do you get the idea? So, oh God, oh God, oh God. That's just a powerful thing to remember. It says, if two or three shall what? Gather, I am. But it didn't say I am dead and two or three will gather to where I am. No. The two or three garden is where that, that brings me there. So the kingdom of God begins with who? Do you understand what I'm saying? How many of you would like to see the power of God in your life now? What am I saying? It begins with who? Me. Can we say this together? Say, I am responsible to the, for the measure of God and his grace that I see in my life. So anywhere you see God manifested, it began with a man. Anywhere you see the move of God, a man did something. Therefore, it is safe to say the kingdom of God is waiting for a man. A man must take initiative. Some people don't listen to local guys. They say, God, now God down the day in a prayer. No, it's in your hand. It's in your hand. Get up and learn what. See, this is why the Jews, the Jews, they, they, they knew it depended on them. When Nicodemus came by night to meet Jesus, he didn't ask what God would do. He said, what must I do to be saved? The kingdom of God begins with what? I. What must I do to be saved? He said, so is the kingdom of God. Amen. Say me, say me, say me, say me, say me. I can't hear the church. Say me. Say me. So, a man must take initiative before we will see the move of God. And then what should the man do? I said, the Bible didn't give you that room for you to determine how to behave. The Bible gave you, a, it, it came with a preset. So when I say it depends on a man now, some people just say, hey, thank God. I will do what I want so that God will do. No, 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 no. The kingdom of God is as if a man will cast seed into the ground. So the action you need to do is already written. Oh, can I, can I teach a little bit this morning? Praise God. Can I teach a little bit this morning? Ungu, he didn't say the kingdom of God is as if a man will cast his seed into the ground. He said will cast seed, not his seed. You don't determine it. He will give it to you. The seed is God's. I, you didn't hear what I said. Um, don't go and do some kind, because when I say depend on a man, some people just want to make their own move. It starts with a man, but what should the man do? Cast seed. Cast what? Seed. Cast seed into the ground. Now let me tell you how it is. 
No matter how hard you worry, if I'm not casting my seed into the ground, sleep will be far from me. But once you read Mark 4 from 26, he said, when I cast my seed into the ground, then I can go to sleep. That you are worried is an indication that you have not sown the right seed. Church, are you here? Because the kingdom of God is as if a man will cast seed into the ground. Then he can go to sleep. Then he can go to sleep. So what is man's job? Find the seed. What's your job? Find the seed. Cast it and go to sleep. He said, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. The earth is programmed to bring harvest as long as the seed is cast. And I'll take that further. The earth will bring forth good and bad fruits. You sow a bad seed, you will get a bad fruit. You sow a good seed, you will get a good fruit. Now, when we say seed now, some people's mind may wonder far. Don't wonder. Raise your head. Let's, let's define these terminologies. The kingdom of God is as if a man will cast what? Seed. What is the seed? Luke 8, 11. The seed is the word of God. Mark 4, 14. The seed. He said, the sower soweth the word. The sower soweth what? The word. Oh, boy. Listen to me. The primary, the primary and basic principle of the kingdom is that a man we sow the word of God as a seed. The most important principle, Jesus said, if you don't know this parable, how will you know other parables? He said, everything on the kingdom, in the kingdom of God work like this. A believer we sow the word. So what is the seed? The word of God. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? The word of God. So the super seed of the kingdom is the word of God. Everything you do in this kingdom, please take note, will rise to the level of your revelation or they will fall to the depth of your ignorance. Everything that you will receive is at the level of your revelation or at the level of your ignorance. Now look at it. No matter how powerful, how intense a spiritual discipline you decide to do. For example, you get up and say you want to do a 21 days dry fast. Or you say, this year, I must do 10 million naira seed. Those are two good spiritual disciplines. But what am I saying to you? The fruits that will come out of any spiritual discipline that you embark on is the level of your revelation or the depth of your ignorance. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? If you like your fast 21 days dry, it's the level of revelation that you have that you will see produce. You get what I'm telling you? You give 21 million naira seed. It's the level of revelation or the depth of ignorance that you have that you will still what? Produce. Because even during the dry fast, if God tell you, I will do a new thing, you will still interpret it to the degree of revelation that you have. Are you all getting what, what I'm saying? So you have to learn that the spiritual potency in anything is the degree of light contained in it. The degree of light contained in it. So, Every spiritual activity is as powerful as the revelation of the person doing it. Every spiritual discipline will produce to the degree of light that the believer involved in it has gotten. That's why two believers can say, in the name of Jesus, come out. Demons running out in one. For the other one, you are asking, Jesus, we know. Paul, we know. Oga. Eh? When demons are calling you, Oga, Oga. Okay. Praise God. 
And now, when I speak about the seed here, please raise your hand so you will learn it. I'm not speaking to just this word of God that you're even hearing now. I want to teach you something powerful. We're talking about revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Because I said everything you do will rise to the level of your what? Revelation. And revelation now is what God told you, Onaya. Not the corporate. What God told you among everything he sent to the corporate. You can call it the engrafted word. Are you all hear what I'm saying? Now, the laziness of too many Christians is that they want to come to a Sunday morning service like this and let the man of God who is anointed say, you are blessed. Everybody shout, amen, 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 amen. Among all of that, you will still get, when the pastor said you are blessed, when you said amen, an image was formed in your heart. Do you know that? What, do you, what did you interpret that you are blessed as? That's what will come into your life. Do you get it? And that's the degree of your personal revelation. So if you receive empty-minded, you will get empty hands. So you have to go for revelation knowledge. No, revelations are not, revelation is not found on the surface. That's why some churches use the word digging deep. Have you heard of digging deep before? You don't find diamond and precious stones on the surface. You have to dig deep. It takes effort, time, pursuit, discipline, attention. In Mark 4.24, give us the AMPC, Amplified Classic, of Mark 4.24. It says, the measure of thought and the measure of study that you give to the truth that you hear will be the measure of virtue and the measure of knowledge. Virtue there is power that comes back to you and more beside will be given to you. You are hearing now. But how do you hit revelation knowledge? He said you will give it a measure of thought and study to what you are hearing. Let me tell you this. Please raise your head. I said this is the key, the master principle of the kingdom. Master principle of the kingdom. Oh, you know what I'm telling you by implication? It is with this message you will interpret all the messages that are taught. It is with this message that you interpret the message that I will teach. Are you all hearing me? So pay attention. When God wants to enrich a man, what does God give to the man? Revelation. When God wants to put honor on a man, what does God give to the man? Light. That is revelation. When God wants to lift a person to glory, what does God give to him? Light. On Mount Transfiguration, 2 Peter 1, verse 17, Peter began to say, he said, we were there when God the Father, because 2 Peter 1, 17. Yes, it is correct. Look at it. In that 2 Peter 1, 17, Peter gave the account because he was there at Transfiguration Mountain. He said, we were there when Jesus received two things from the Father, from God the Father. What are the two things? Honor and what? Glory. He said, we were there when he received it. But I want to tell you or bring your attention to how did he receive honor and glory. He said, when there came a what? A voice. Oh, did you all see that there? How did God put honor and glory on Jesus? God gave him light. God gave him revelation. So the way God will put honor and glory on anybody is by giving him what? Revelation knowledge. If you understood that, say a big amen. amen. Say a big amen. amen. Say a big amen. amen. So God gives honor to people by opening their eyes to see. So you must learn this. In the kingdom of God, revelation is possession. Revelation is what? That's how you take possession. That's why, listen now, some of you have seen some practices in churches. You have seen a particular believer behave a certain way you didn't understand. In a teaching service like this, 
Someone can hear his engrafted word and then he shouts, I got it. I received it. This one of the grace. Oh. In the kingdom, light is the way we take what? Possession. If God shows you, he wants to give it to you. In fact, in truth, if God shows you, he has already given it to you. That's why I told Abraham, behold, I have made you. See it, I have already what? Made you. But Abraham has to see it. So, what you become in God is at the mercy of your revelation. Let me tell you why I'm teaching it this way. In this month, we are teaching prosperity, right? Let me tell you, you will prosper to the degree of revelation. That's why, listen, now, you can't repeat some words. Light have to hit you. And from light, so you know, Bishop Ebo, there's this video of him saying, I can never be poor. Have you seen it before? But have you heard the story behind it? How he took Papa Copeland's books. How he stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed. And it came out of those prayers and study and fasting. That statement is empty statement for a lot of people repeating it. Do you understand? For him, that statement is built on a particular foundation. And the revelation is the foundation. So don't repeat what the pastor said just like that. The measure of thought and study that you give to what you hear is the measure of power. Are, are you all seeing this now? The same statement, Reverend Christian, I can even have one statement like that too. But he said this one very what? Bougie. So I, I can never be poor. I, I can never be poor. Then you too now, depending on your personality, you can either shout, I can never be poor, or you can just do, I, I can never be poor. But if you do not, if you did not get the light that both of them got, you go poor. You go to talk, say, I can never be poor, but you go what? You go poor. What have I told you now? Our confession in the kingdom is as powerful as the light that inspired the confession. Oh, do you understand it? That's why Peter said, you should do well to take heed to the light that shines in a dark place. Pay attention to it. He said, and you know what? I love that scripture. He says, stay with that light. He said, as you stay, he began, it's that's a computer one. Come on. He says, do where to take it to that light that shines in the dark place. Till it becomes. He said, till the day dawns in your heart. And the day star rises. So let me tell you. Hallelujah. I think this particular one is what we will teach next week. There's something called the incubation of, the, of light. You know the way hens sit on their eggs? When you hear a word in a service like this, and you know it is your word, what do you do? You sit on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Incubation, incubation. Say, pay attention to that small word, flicker or prophetic word in a service. Sometimes the other people do not hear what he said. Do you get what I'm saying? One time, Papa Copeland came to Canaan. And if you know the way Papa Copeland teaches, he will tell one story, he will laugh, he will shout, he will jump. So, me, I was seeing him the whole thing for the first time. So, you see, they try to, which one will be the message, which one will be the story? If you see Bishop Edelboy in that service, serious! I do wonder, what did he write? What did this man write? Because Papa Copeland, you tell some guys, when he tell one story, somebody goes shout, glory to God! Hey! I know he's a small man. When he finished, Bishop Edelboy just came and said, with what he just said now, with what he just said now, we are going to be the hundred church in a year. What, what did he just said? <laughs> and excuse me, what did he said? <laughs> You're going to look people notes. <laughs> I be a guy with you. They talk where I know. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said, "How ye rest thou? How do you understand what I'm saying? Inside the service now, people are hearing and hearing. Oh, how ye rest what thou? He said, "Take heed." As the service is going on, the pastor will say something as the prophet. It's a flicker of prophecy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it comes as a word, a flicker of light. 
what do you do? Then you incubate. You stay with that word till the day dawns in your heart. What it means is till that light has overtaken your whole body. Are you seeing it now? So you, oh no, 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 no. It takes a little time, I must add. But let, let's continue our, our trail of talk. We'll come back to this next week. Amen. 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 If you're here, say a big amen. amen. So he op- God opens your eyes. He opens your eyes. So, life does not come to you from a God that you do not know. This is why you yourself must build a personal devotion. The secrets of God are with them that fear him. Oh, are you all hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says he's made his acts known to the Israelites, but he made his ways known to Moses. And revelation is ways, so it's not acts. It falls under ways. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to be somebody's friend for him to be giving you secrets. Shall I hide what I want to do from Abraham, seeing that he shall surely become what? Great. For I know him. Look at that same I know him. Who he does not know, he will not tell the things he wants to do. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? You can't take light from somebody who does not know you. I have to know you before I tell you secrets. Stop coming to service one service. You go come this one now before they see you again next month. And then you believe that you're going to catch, we catch with light. Who go on the torch? No, you can't get revelation from a God. You don't know. No, you can't. You can't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Timothy 4 and the 15. Paul said to Timothy, give yourself, I like the way Bishop will pronounce it, holy to these things. And your property shall what? Appear. But you don't want to give yourself to it. But you want to what? Make profit. No, 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 no. So confessing prosperity that the wealth of nations flow towards me like a river and the glory of the Gentiles like an overflowing stream without you going back to shoot the world, to sit with the world, praying it privately will lead to no fruit and ultimately it will lead to disappointment. And if they don't teach you the workings of the kingdom, you will now say that the church disappointed you. It's a lie. I prayed, I fasted, I gave, I even sowed seed. It not a work. But what you did not know that you did not seek the kingdom. You did not learn the ways of the kingdom. So now we know what number one is. Number one is what? The word of God. Mark 4, 14, don't forget. The sower soweth the word. Behind every offering should be a revelation. Yes, there are days and times where you need to sow monetary seeds. Amen? But remember, what is the super seed of the kingdom? The word of God. So, listen now. That lady came to do testimony and said, and then I, I, I put 500,000 at the feet of the prophets. And when I went home, that's the day, that night we, con- we, con- we conceived. What is the formula now? The formula is to put 500,000 at the feet of the prophets. My dear, you go put many 500,000 on. Nothing go happen. Then you'll not be angry with the church. You'll not go on Facebook. Church is a scam. All pastors are thieves. Praise God. The power in a monetary seed is the light, the revelation behind the monetary seed. Did you hear what I said? That's why you don't copy people's testimonies. Get the light. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Get the light. Get the light. So, even the day you, you sense in your heart that God said you should give a million, pray. You hear what I'm saying? God, he said, he that received the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understand it. Now, in Luke 8, from verse 5 to 10, I want to show you something very powerful. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Don't worry, I know it's hot today. We will cool the church ourselves. Amen. Amen. But we'll see here word of God. Amen. Are you still here? 
in Luke 8, just they will flip 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 to 10 for you. But I'll just give you a paraphrase. They spoke about four different soils, which are likeness of four different what? Hearts. I want to show you something really powerful. If uh, the Bible said in Luke 8, verse 5, it said, And the sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed the seed, some fell. Take note. There is no difference in the seed. There's only a difference in the soil. Same teaching today. Some people are getting words. Some people are getting instruction. Remember Hebrews 4 and verse 2? The word being preached was taught to us as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. Same word, same word. Let me teach you something. God is responsible for the state of your heart. So he gave you a new heart. You are responsible for the condition of that state of the heart that God gave you. You are the one responsible for the condition of your heart. You are the one. Same word, different harvest. Same seed, different fruits. So what is the important thing there to note? Your heart will reduce every prophetic word to its own level. No, it's not about how anointed the prophet is. It's about the condition of your heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your heart will, is the one that determines the harvest that will come from the prophetic word. Your heart. is your heart. So, it's simple. You determine the harvest you get. Even when uh, 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 Ephesians 3 tells us that God is able to do it abundantly, he still ended up saying, according to the power that worketh in you. Your heart. The condition of your heart. The condition of your what? Mark 4.24, Amplified Classic, it will ring in your head today. It says, be careful what you hear. The measure of thought and study you give to what you hear is a measure of power. It's a measure of knowledge that will come to you. The word is all powerful. The word is potent. We see that in Hebrews 4.12. Abi, however, know this. In Mark 7.13, Jesus said, you have made the word of God of none effect because of your traditions. So what does it mean? God can release his powerful word to you then your heart can remove power from that word. To make the word of non effect is to make the word powerless. Do you hear what I'm saying? But it's powerless only in your life because you made it so. Hopefully, we'll get to how to get yourself rid of all those things customs, philosophies, ideologies that you keep high in your heart. And they are blocking the word of God from getting to you. No, 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 no. Let me teach you something. Can we see Hebrews, I mean Philippians 4? Paul taught in Philippians 4, in verse 6, he said, Let us be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known. All right? And then in verse 7, he says, And then the peace of God, which passes understanding, would guard us in your heart, as it were. Then verse Eight is where we are going. I want to show you something. Please raise your head. Raise your head. Raise your head. Don't let. It. How do you sleep in this heat? It's a black baboon. Only a black baboon can make you sleep in this heat. Praise God. Now I want to show you something very powerful. Never ever separate your thoughts before, during, and after prayer from your prayer. What you think during the prayer, what you are thinking after the prayer, is a major part of the prayer. In Philippians 4, from verse 6, Paul says, In everything by prayer and supplication, you should let your request be made known. He said, God will not bring his peace to guard your heart. In verse 7. Then in verse 8, he now said, Listen now, this is instruction. This is the instruction. Look at your Bibles, please. Look at I think that, I'm, I'm sure a screen near you might be working. It says, finally what? Brethren. 
You know what finally is? This is where we draw the line. I told you to use thanksgiving to present your supplication. He said, but this is what determines what will come out of your supplication. This is the determining factor. Whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, true, good report. What did he say we should do? He said, think on these things after you have made your supplication known. The untrained believers think that after they come to church, you give me my wife, you give me my children, you give me that. after you don't kabash, you think you can think on anything the way you like. No, sir. He said, what will determine the fruit that you will get out of prayer is what you keep your mind on after prayer. This is why meditation is where the harvest is. What you think about. That's where the power is. What your mind stays on. Please don't forget this. Your heart is the most fertile soil in the world. Anything that touch your heart grows. Anything that touch your heart grows. So you cannot with one mouth be saying, prosperity flow towards me like a river. And then you are harboring malice, anger, vengeance, offense in your heart. It is your heart that produces so. And it's what is sown in the heart that it will produce. Don't forget, it is what is sown in the heart that is what that will be produced. I want you to see it like this. Praise God. At least I help Pastor Richard. Praise the Lord. Raise your hand. Let me teach you something, how your heart is. See your heart. Uh, there's a word I'm looking for. There's a word I'm looking for. Yes. Some, how many of you know there's something called exotic farming? Exotic, exotic fruit farming. Do you know that, right? See your heart as an ex exotic fruit farm. Your heart. And see your heart as a very fertile, exotic fruit farm. Such that anything that touches your, that farm, it does what? It grows. You see? Guess the trick. So you have planted the word of God. How many of you spoke God's word over your life this year? This year they entered. How many of you received prophetic word for this year? So those are the exotic fruits that you are planted. You are waiting for them to grow and bear some fruits. Now see anger like this. Anger as oil spillage. Did you catch it? The next time you keep offense, they throw one gallon of what? Oil spillage on the farm. What does that mean? That area will not produce. It does not listen. It does not only kill the fruits planted. It damages the soil. The next time you hold malice against somebody in your office, on the other side of the farm, you don't pour diesel. Are you getting the idea? That day that you're already planning how you will take revenge, you don't pour chemical. So if you will see your farmland in the realm of the spirit, this guy being planted, oh, who can pour chemical for every year now? Not the guy. You know why? Only him has access to his heart. Your heart is a land that you are the only one that has the key to. That's why Proverbs 4 said, guard your heart. He said, don't, don't pay people to guard your heart. You can't. Your wife can't guard your heart. Your husband can't guard your heart. He says, oh boy, lock it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Lock it. For a city without walls. You know, a man that has no rule over his territory is as a city without walls. And where I was going is a city without walls will be easily invaded. Oh, do you hear what I'm saying? Today, if you buy land, one of the first advice they give you is what? Fence Sam. You don't give that advice before. Oh God, you go fence Sam. Pull red cloth, pull red cloth. Maybe they say, who get I get you If there are no wars, men, the devil will enter. The whole principle of having a sound mind is being in control of your heart. 
Did you hear what I said? It's you being in control of what? Your heart. So look at it that way. Your heart is what produces. You just finished prayer meeting. Your husband taught you. He said, leave me alone. Oh. Not let me put the one in my body for your body. Oh. You don't know what he's doing. Just leave me, just leave me. Your, ch- your daughter has come and said, go, go, go and meet your daddy, go and meet your daddy, go and meet your daddy. But just now, what if they pray? Finish this year five times better. Five times better. Your good confession that you are sowing, every time you are confessing, take note, you are sowing into your vegetation. What is your vegetation? Your heart. That good confession that you are sowing into your vindictive heart is a confession that has gone to waste. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? That's why Jesus said, if you have heart towards any when you pray, he said, wait there. Because you are about to sow seeds into what? A hurtful farmland. Are you getting the idea? He said, if you brought a seed to sow, and you're angry with your brother, he said, drop the seed in the altar. You are about to sow that money into what? An oil-spilled what? Farmland. It won't grow. No matter how deep you dig that seed, it won't grow. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? The principle of the seed is there. Genesis 1, 11 and 12. When God wanted to see a vegetation on the earth, what did he do? He brought seeds. Seeds that can produce after their own kind. You can't take this principle away from the kingdom. Find the right seed from the word of God. Make the right soil. You see the way I said two different things? Oh, church, did you hear the difference? Find the right seed from the word of God. And what do you do? Make the right soil. Your heart. That one, you make. That's how, pro- that's how progress comes in the kingdom. And let me teach you something. The things that will offend you, they are legitimate. Do you know? Hallelujah. It's called cares of this world. You know what cares is? It has my legitimate attention. So you mean, say, may I not care about my king's school fees? Pastor, is that what you are saying? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying cast the care on the bigger shoulders. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Cast how many of your cares? All your cares. For he careth for you. You know Peter quoted David here? Let, let's, see, let, let's see that. Oh, it's important that you see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First of all, let's see 1 Peter 5, 7 in the Amplified Classic. He said, Cast, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Peter was quoting David. Psalm 55, 22. AMPC 2, please, quickly. Psalm 55, 22. He said, cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it. That's why you can't sleep. The weight of the school fees. And he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistent righteous to be moved, made to sleep, <laughs> excuse me, fall or fail. Say, that is me. Say, that is me. So don't joke with your seed and don't joke with the state and the condition of your heart. That's why it says, keep your heart, Proverbs 4.23, with all diligence, for out of it will flow. Listen to me. Your life is the harvest. Your heart is the seed place. Your life will always mirror your heart. That's why I tell people, you can't hide your thoughts from me. And they see I'm your life will always mirror your heart. Now let me show you this and then we'll wrap up. Marrying all these things from where we started from. It says do not be need conscious. Be seed conscious. I want to show you something. I want to show you something please. I want to show you something. 
Even when you pray, don't pray your need. Pray what the seed has provided about your need. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words in you, then you would ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. This is how the kingdom works. This is how you will get anywhere in life. You have a need, find a seed for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to teach you a principle. That's why I need your attention. I said, you have a need, what do you do? I can't hear the people here. All of you here say with me, say, when I have a need, I will find a seed for it. I don't tell you why the, what, what's the use of a need. Now listen. This is the only way you can enter into rest. That you will find a seed for your need. Then you enter rest. Remember the, where we started from? The kingdom of God is so. A man plants seed into the earth. And he goes to sleep. What is the use of need? What is the use of need? Every need in your life, gift, is an indication of a seed you have not planted. Every need in your life is an indication of a revelation that you don't have yet. So when I have a need, I shouldn't cry. I should open my Bible to find the seed. Church, are you all hearing what we're doing here now? Needs are symptoms. Needs are showing you areas you don't have lights. Needs are signaling. Wait. If you have a phone, do you know that when the battery is low, the phone tells you the battery is low? Huh? The phone tells you that, right? Rachel, what is a need? A need is a divine signaling system that God has created to tell you. Revelation low. Revelation low. Revelation. Are you getting this? So the need is shouting at you. Revelation what? Low. Light needed. Light needed. The challenge is too many people are crying when they have a need. Can I tell you a little more? Just a little more. Every need can become a positive, a negative seed. If you don't deal with that house rent need properly that you have, it will grow to make sure you can never build your own house. It will grow to make sure you are never able to build a house for the Lord. This thing I just told you, I need to meditate on it. That how you respond to the signal a need is bringing to you. Take my say every need is a signal. Did you get what I said? The day you have house rent need, if you get the seed, cast it into the ground, go to rest and see the miracle of the rent. The day it is time to build your house. Are you all getting this? Based on the precedence of you casting seed and seeing harvest, when it's time to build house, you will still what? How did I get here? Seed casting. I'll cast it. Are you all getting this? Every need can become a negative what? Seed. Depend on how you respond. That's why every time the devil, you have a need, the devil will begin to talk to you. You know what he's trying to do? He's trying to make sure that the next time a bigger problem comes, you will not be able to get up. You will not be able to carry yourself. So see and use needs for what they are. What are they? Signals. You get that? Signals. It's just shouting at you. Light, low. Light, low. Light, low. So don't be angry when you have a need. Need is a gauge. Need is revelation gauge. 
need is a light gauge. So when you have a need, what do you say? You say, thank you. I know what to focus on now. Hallelujah. Did you get what I just said? When you have a need, thank you. I know what to what. Do you know what I'm telling you? Please. Let you find yourself that something they could do you. Come like say your immunity system. You not call get immunity again. Do you know what that is? It's a signal. You haven't eaten my word concerning healing for a long time. Did you catch it? So what do I do? I buy, I buy, I get some books. Maybe they're already in my library. I get some messages, faith for healing, and I sit with it. So the need is a what? A gauge. It says, are you all understanding what I'm saying? Your finances have been pretty poor the last four months. You they cry. No. Oh, God, you have a car. Eh? When for entire reserve, say that uh, filling station, how do they call that thing? Filling station uh, supervisor, tell me. <laughs> the pump. Abby? It shows. What is that? Signal. Should you know if you are driving now? That's a filling station signal. Show for your car. You can't cry. Signal is so. No, thank you for telling me what I need to do. Somebody is driving. You say, "Baby, see station, Tell me when we enter." True or false? So your finances in the office have been somehow. Ah, boy, revelation on this area what? Low. Trust. Do you understand this? So what do you do? You gather the tapes. You gather it all, and then you sit with it, and then you speak with it. That's how you cast the seed. Then you go to rest. Two months later, everywhere, harvest, 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 harvest. What happened? You casted the seed. If you understand this, say a big amen. amen. Say a big amen. amen. Now, I want to show you how to just correct something, and then you close. Look at this. Mark 4.24. Go back, and I want everybody to read it. The Amplified Classic. Ah. Oh. We can't rush it. We'll pick it up next week. All right. Go there, go there, go there. Mark 4, 24. Church, read as though the person beside you can read. Both to identify them and to wake them up. All right, read out loud. One, two, three, go. Praise God. Three minutes. Look at it. I saw this for the first time. I couldn't sleep. Well. I was looking at it. Please look at the scripture in front of you. Pastor Dennis, it says when a need show up in your life, you should ask yourself, what have I been hearing? You hear the wrong things, needs will grow in your life. It starts by saying, Je Jesus speaking. He said, oh God, be very careful what you are opening your ears to. Has anybody seen the Bible? Isaac, he says, be careful what have I been hearing. So when they need to open your life, two things. Sir, what have I been hearing? Two, what have I not been hearing? There are things I ought to be hearing that I no longer, let's say. <laughs> listen, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you in a certain season in your life were listening to certain things and you saw some results? You pulled away and you saw those things decline. Did you hear what I said? Stick with people who talk about miracles, you will see miracles. You hear what I'm telling you? You will see what? Miracles. That's why I will take every point to tell you, I believe in miracles. I have seen too many miracles. I'm a walking miracle. I believe in what? Miracles. Hallelujah. Say, say, a need show up in your life. Ask yourself, what have I been what? When Adam and Eve went to hide themselves, what did God come to say? Who told you that? What have you been hearing, sir? He said, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you hear. What did Jesus say? 
Cassandra, Jesus is telling you, say, if you keep hearing the right things, your needs will be met effortlessly. The kingdom of God is a hearing kingdom. Oh, did you hear what I said? Benny Hinn healed one woman of cancer. She was healed. In his ministry, God healed the woman. Six months later, that woman was there with cancer. He said, man of God, the cancer came back. And the man of God asked her on the stage, what have you been hearing? Are you all hearing what I'm saying? She said she went back to her church. And in their church, the apostle there said that miracles that stopped with the last apostles. They don't believe in miracles. So when she was hearing that every day for six months, cancer that vanished started to grow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God have healed you. You have gone to meet people who speak against the power of God. And you are wondering why the thing is coming back. What have you been what? Hearing. And shall I tell you something? Bulk of your hearing happened outside the church. This message is long. Well, we never reached two hours. So. How many hours did the week? Do you hear what I said? What do you open your ear to during the week? The woman came back with cancer. The man of God said, what have you been what? Since the healing. During this COVID. During this COVID. They were talking about the things that happened. People dying in the world. COVID, COVID, COVID. Bishop Ebba told his sons. He said, they should turn on the TV. He wants to really see what's going on. In the world, they turned on the television. Less than 10 minutes, the old man said, turn it off. I cannot be listening to this and help men. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you something in this life. There are no casual information. They are lost somewhere in your heart, waiting to either help or attack your faith. Did you hear what I said? Some people will tell you certain things and you'll be like, you know, enter, you know, enter, or they, she. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. Uh, I wish we had next Sunday, we will feast. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody before? And then they told they, you were in a place, they were saying some things. You didn't think in my, in, uh, the things they were saying was important. You just pushed it aside. Then one day you were somewhere. You did. You are not surprised as to how detailed you remember the thing that they said. Because you are regurgitating what they said with so much detail. But when they said it, you behaved as if, you know, everything you hear is lodged in your heart. If they wait for you for... It will either attack your faith or help your faith later. So there are no casual information. As the pastor... I sit down and looking at the news like this. Do you know what the news is? A compilation of heartbreaks. 20 die in Ukraine. 220 die in bomb blasts in Iran. Then on Sunday, I'm shouting, you are healed. But you know the images in my heart? 20 die in Ukraine. Are you getting the idea? So I sit down. I'm looking at T.L. Osborne, saying you are healed, and people are getting healed. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you get what I'm telling you? Yeah. Everything you hear forms an image in your heart. So that when you later start to speak, you speak those images. When I say red, you, you did not see arrow ED. You saw color, true or false? True. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes, there are no casual... It gets some friendship where you not need. Yes, sir. I told you before on Wednesday here. Was it Wednesday? Or was it Friday? I said, I'm in the WhatsApp group with some of my friends. We have been friends 20 something years. So that's why the group exists. But there's somebody there because she has gone to America. Any small thing speaks about I said, I said, you are going to stop talking like this. Either I will delete you from the group or I will remove myself from the group. This Nigeria where I'm showing. Is over for which country? Is, do you people understand what I'm saying? You are there, you say, this country don't finish. They don't shop this country finish. 
but you get stuff for the country where the shop finish, and you are wondering why your store go grow or not go grow. Country where the shop finish, then they shop your store. Are you people hearing what I'm saying? There are no casual information. We'll start from Mark 4. It says, first of all, be careful what you hear. It's a hearing kingdom. The first thing you need is to hear well. Right? Next week, I will show you. Also, you don't hear everybody. He that hears everybody is a madman. We produce nothing. You hear what I'm telling you? There is a man that God has sent to you. Jesus told the disciples in John 6, he says, Shall you, will you not go also? And they asked him, to whom? Not to be here. There are words and there are words of life. He says, you only have the words of life. So please, some of you are rev. You know, you are looking for rev. There is rev without life. There is rev without grace. Huh? You will be like the, the Athenians who have itchy ears, seeking to hear and to say new things. But you will not have power. In John 10, uh, Romans 10, 14, 15, he says, How shall they hear except a preacher be sent? Uh, uh, do you understand it? So it is the man that God sent to you all that you hear. That's why you gather your bag of seed. And then you will go home. And then you will sit with it. Praise God. So your pastor is not the fine guy that you like. I like the way that pastor they dress. I like their design. Your church is not the church you like their music that they sing for club. Relax. Your church is a place where God has appointed a man. He said, I will set pastors after my heart, my own heart, who shall feed them with knowledge and understanding. And because of that, they shall no more be dismayed. Are you all understanding what we're saying? So he says, first of all, be careful how you hear. Be careful what you hear. Be careful who you hear. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Bow your head and say a word of prayer.